Wait, are we missing somebody? Are we missing? I don't think we're missing anyone, love. Okay. I think the gang's well, my, all here. My Discord wasn't showing one problem picture. <laughs> um. Well, to recap real quick, you guys, uh, we pick up where we left off, which was inside and outside the hut of Endolin, alleged daughter of Baba Yaga, a somebody who's uh, oh, I don't know, got Poppy in a bit of a tizzy, but um, Mara and Tendi are outside uh, with the harsh winds of the Cloudwall Mountains uh, approaching. You guys have a few more days left of your journey, but uh, your trip with uh, uh, your trip with Endolin will at least like give you some nice warm time indoors. Uh, and I, I I don't think I mentioned this last time, but it is like a TARDIS where it is bigger on the inside. Um, not much bigger, but bigger on the inside. Uh, you had convinced her that she needed to be. Uh, she needed to be able to read off and promise uh, the items that are in the document, which I've, which I've spent a little bit of time on. So I will go ahead and we'll pick up right from there. You want me to what again, love? To say I promise and then read out every single one of these. Oh, I could do that. Um, there's a bit at the end that's a little hard for me to say, oh, I promise, before stuff you have to agree to, but... Um, well, it, I mean, you don't have to say I promise in, in front of every single one. If you do, like, an overarching I promise, then maybe I'll believe you, maybe. So if I'll, like, do, like, I promise all the things that says I will, or... Mm -hmm. or okay. I think you just have to, like... If it makes sense to say I promise in front of... Then say I promise in front of it, and if it doesn't grammatically make sense, maybe just don't. You know, well, I'll give that to you, love. All right. <clears throat> well, hold on. I need some more me tea. She gets uh, her tea and looks a lot like Mountain Dew Voltage. Um, and she goes, "All right." <clears> How <throat> we? Okay, here it is. Um. Are you sure you want me to go ahead and do that? Oh, I said it, didn't I? I guess you did. All right, all right, all right. These assurances are not to be interpreted by any way that would be to the agreeing party's disadvantage. Agreeing to this list of assurances is non-binding and offered on an individual visit basis. I promise I will not attack you. I promise... I will not perform magical spells to either benefit nor harm the agreeing parties. Magic cast by the host, that's me, will be upon themselves only. I promise offered hospitality does not infer favors owed to the host, nor anything that the host can utilize to the guest's disadvantage. I promise if the house cat Piltroy sits on a guest's lap, they will not cause it harm and co and shall be the only guest that can pet it while on the respective guest's lap. And in turn, Piltroy promises that it will not cause harm to those it sits upon. And as she's reading, as, as, the, as she says the name Piltroy, um, there's like a bookshelf on legs, not real legs, but like, you know, wooden legs, um, that you see cats, um, like cats paws kind of walking underneath as it were like resting behind it um and up on top of the this like coffee table-esque type uh drawer uh there is a lot of just various knickknacks there's like a model house um that is like lit from the inside perhaps by like a tea candle or something of that um a cornucopia with not fruits but like cheeses that are really shiny um like they gleam off of the light that's flickering off the fireplace and a couple of like shrunken heads um one of which uh kind of is more realistic than the other ones they're like this uh this this shrunken head has like uh hair that is fine and straight 
uh, and would go all the way down to like where the the head itself cuts off, where it's like just resting right atop the wood wood top of this drawer. Um, the nose is extremely shrunken, and the mouth is pursed in like a uh, kind of pursed lips situation. Uh, but the most unnerving thing about this is it's perfectly round, large, yellow, flat-colored eyes that are about the size of like a half dollar if you were to put a half dollar up to your eye. Um, and as the as Piltroy's uh, legs sort of get to the end, the head rises and moves, and an ex a cat with an extended neck that goes for about two feet, ending in this shrunken head, uh, comes crawling out from behind this wooden uh, wooden drawer and uh, comes kind of starting to walk up to Endelin as she kind of like looks down and, and presents as evidence that this is Pilteroy. Uh, and also, lastly, I promise that all guests within the hut shall be protected from external threats and danger during their stay. For any pets, livestock, external parties not in agreement with the documents and horses, uh, there's no guarantee of safety. Now, for your part, it says by agreeing to the assurances above, you additionally agree to the terms below in direct relation to the reader being present in understanding for this document. And she looks at Lee often and goes, that means you, love. Like, you all. Not, you know, a lot of, I know it's a bit wordy. You have read this document in full. Any and all questions related to this document and its contents have been satisfied. You agree to not speak of this meeting for both party safety unless asked directly without any influence or coercion. You will not attack your host. Again, that's me. And you will not perform magical spells to harm the host. Any magic cast by guests will be upon themselves only and with the host's permission and knowledge of. And that's about it, really. I have a question. I figured you would. What you got? Mm -hmm. Do you promise to let us leave when it's, when it's time for us to go? Oh, of course. You, guys are, you said you're headed eastward, right? Mm -hmm. uh, remind me, did you guys say where you were headed last time? Uh, Prudence uh, said the Temple of All Gods. Right. Yeah, yeah, the pathway goes for a bit there. At least you could be able to get, like, at least a day of not having to march on your feet. Um, you, you're certain that those outside want to be able to stay out there. They don't want to come in. You were pretty adamant of, on staying out there. Okay. Well, perhaps, well, if you need... To warm up water for them to be able to sip. And you need to go outside to be able to uh, take it to them. I suppose you could. Maybe we take a break just hanging out, you know, or, or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. But, um, yeah, if they want to stay outside, then I suppose that they could. But uh, any other questions? If they at any point in time want to come in, are they allowed? They'd have to agree with the documents, love. It's getting a bit hot in here, don't you think? And she looks over at Lee Austin. Lee Austin smirks. Do you want me to you want me to turn it down or maybe open a window? It's I... pretty cold outside. I don't think we should open a window. I'll, I'll... just bring the cold in air in. I mean, no, it's it's not the. It it is cold outside, yes, but when I open the window, it's at least a comfortable a comfortable chilly breeze, not like not like out there. Mm, I still don't want the window open. We appreciated the offer, though. Oh, you know, and it gives like Poppy a look. Well, if... she gives a look back to you, <laughs> guy. I, we have to be able to all be in agreement, and I believe I did my my due diligence in promising all the things per your um, fairy's uh, requests. Graydon slowly lifts, lowers the cinnamon roll back to send. Here you go. Thank you. Do you Sin promise that these things have not been covered with? 
<laughs> I forgot about that part. Yeah, you she she pro I mean, Sin, I know you probably I, mean, I know you're probably looking to be able to um enjoy the pastries, but your friend's quite concerned for all of you, so perhaps maybe don't think about digesting it until you promise just to be safe. I don't want I don't want to cause any inter-party drama, you know. Uh, what, what what do I or do with what's in my mouth already? Just to eat it. Oh my god, don't talk like that again. This is disgusting. <laughs> Crumbs falling out. If anything happens, you deserved it. <laughs> Damn. He's not he's the one that don't listen to me. <laughs> he had it coming. <laughs> he had it coming. Uh I guess it's a real awkward silence. Piltroy jumps up on her lap. It's never awkward until you mention the awkwardness. Yeah, you're probably right. Mm-hmm. Piltroy's looking, like, head is, like, it jumps up and its head doesn't, it stays in place as the body jumps up to kind of catch up to it, leaving a big long U where the uh, long neck is, but it hasn't really left looking at, at all of you. <laughs> I am in agreement. Thank you, it's, handsome. Cinema roll is amazing. Thank you. I don't get to try but uh, have many people try them, so I think they're good. But it's good to have a second opinion. Um, can I get a second? Opinion? Cinnamon oh, cinnamon roll. Of course, yeah. Um, yeah, help yourself. And some, and, and some of the, the tea that I smelt earlier. Sure. Do you want me to pour it for you? Hey, Sin. Yeah, yes. Before you stuff your face again, can you just say the words "I promise"? Um, just real quick. A, a promise. A, a promise. What, what am I? What am I doing? Well, he said it twice exactly. now. Exactly. You weren't paying attention. He said it twice. That means he means it. Uh, or His he eyes were attention. quite fans, transfixed on this sweet. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure he probably needs all the sugar that he possibly does. Look at all those wasps. Prue, do you promise? Oh yes, of course, I promise to behave. And I also promise. Well, I mean, behave and, and what the documents say, um, according to your friend here, is, is, is there's really a, a dividing line. You have to... Promising to behave and promising by what is listed in the documents is two completely separate things. Understood. I promise to abide by your documents. Wonderful. Took me a while to write it, so. Um, let's Your see. Your penmanship is pretty good, though. Mm, well, I was I had a lot of time to be reading books that are handwritten, and um, there was a man I fancied, and I copied his handwriting, and um, well, he died, but I got better at his handwriting. I think better than he did. Let me just delve into that a bit further. Pretty <laughs> sits down. <laughs> oh, um, I mean, what's to tell? Uh, it's about four, uh, four years ago. Um, there was a man that was, uh, he said he was a, a educated gentleman, uh, a, a writer. Um, I actually have a couple books of his around here somewhere, probably a little dusty though. I haven't read them, but, uh, his handwriting is, is brilliant. It is very clear. Able to be read. I prefer more, you know, the flourishes you see on the page. But we, um, uh, we had a couple of, uh, n n nights. And he, he went on his way. And I haven't really seen him since. Until I heard that he died. I'm sorry for your loss. Well, it's not really my loss. I mean, sure, I liked him, but you only get to know somebody for a couple nights and and uh, a short amount of time, and you instantly head over heels to it and do anything for them. It's a bit, it's a bit forward. Certainly, you guys must have been a uh, group a group for quite some time with how how well you all get together. Grins, not quite. Ended up in a jail cell together though. Ooh, cheeky. Hey, beast. No. No, just a big misunderstanding, <laughs> really. 
Was it? Do you guys even remember that night very well? Not at I don't all. Remember Just anything? What you told us about it. Like Austin shakes his head as he puts his shield by the front door and takes his helmet off. I don't remember anything. Mm. As fuzzy as everything else, I guess. I suppose so. So what, um, what brings you out here in the cold? I mean, I know you're going to the Temple of the Gods, but that's a quite a long trek from what I can only assume would be anywhere west of here. And I don't look, I don't think you have the look of, and, or the smell of Bratis Lorians on you. Um, it's just simply the fact that we're just visiting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. You fancy the gods, do you? We acknowledge their existence. Mm. I mean, they are real. That's for sure. Have you ever met one? No, but my mum was saying that she, there was one that ascended to godhood when she was just a wee lad, lass. Ascended. Yeah. There are some, some gods that you're probably well aware of today became gods after very incredibly selfless acts and heroic deeds. Mm. Do they always have to be selfless and heroic? Oh, no, there's certainly dot gods that didn't do any of those things. Um, not quite sure how they got about them, their power, though. He also takes uh, a seat on the, the comfiest looking chair that's open. The, uh, what does the chair look like? It's, it's upholstered, but it's got a lot of, like, nice wood accents. Like, the arms are still wood with, like, cushion, like, plush cushions on the top. It's a little battle-worn, like, it's clearly been there for a minute. It's been clearly used by a lot of different people, but... The stuffing in it is just, like, smushed enough that it's still comfy, but you kind of sink into it. Uh, maybe, like, a... Like, a velvet, but there's a lot of, like, bits missing on it, so it's, like, a, it's just old, old yeah. comfy, cool chair. You sink, you sink down a little lower than even you expect, but it is certainly comfortable, although probably... For a prolonged period of time, you may, you may have, uh, you might, you might be sore, but... For now, it is quite comfortable. That's enough right now. Happy man. You know, I gotta say, you're almost mighty impressive. Thank you. It was a gift. He kind of glances at Prudent. Are you that big underneath all of that, though? Like, is it like skin tight? Is it just a layer of that and then just you? Look at you know, like all the. Uh, what is the reason you're traveling? Oh, <laughs> well, that's a good question. What? Where were you before um, you spotted us, I guess? Uh, well, I was coming... I, 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 I kept my distance around Blackness Law. It's a pretty um, pretty terrible place and time to be. So I was coming around the, the south of the Cloud War Mountains, and I was getting ahead, ready to head to Wormwood. Um, uh, and um, I ended up seeing smoke one night from one of your camps, and so I figured, uh, you know, if you're... If you probably were needing a lift through the mountains, I'd be more than happy to be able to do that. And plus, I haven't had company in at least a while. You often get them some... Me? Yes. Oh, I got Pilteroy. Um, but besides the fact, yeah, many people don't want to come in. Which I, which is understandable. I will say I'm not oblivious to the fact that my mum's Baba Yaga. Yes, your reputation precedes you. Or her reputation least... precedes her. No one really knows about Endelin. So Maybe we'll do... you should write your own story. I get hand cramps. What would you like us to know about Endelin? Well, youngest. Far more beautiful. Does you she know... have more children? You know how young children are? We're spoiled. Yes. And yes, they can old, be. Older sisters hate us because we get all the stuff they get at such an earlier age than they were when they were our age and so on. It's, uh... Siblings, man. They're just... They're just... 
It is what it is. Something yep. else that might um, help your cause, I guess. Um, it, is it necessary to travel around in this, um, this hut with the chicken legs? Because um, it's kind of n notorious, I guess. I mean, it does make for a quiet, quiet ride if you really don't want to have to be hassled. I mean, um, it is it is very pleasant. Just um, if you're trying to to distance yourself from your mum, just figured that um, maybe if you didn't also travel in the same way. Oh, we don't. Um, I'm not trying to distance myself from my mum. Um, I'm, I'm I love her quite a bit. Uh, it's just you know she's. Uh, you know, mums, they're always busy. And uh, her her house is far bigger. I'll let you know that. If you see another one like mine, it's another sister of mine. Although, um, you probably don't want to mess with them. They're a little bit more mean. And then there's our adopted sister, who's actually technically the youngest. But look, I'll, I'll be real with you. I mean, she was adopted. So. What does that mean? Um, it means that if you look at it on a piece of paper, then technically I'm the youngest, and she was born from somebody else, but brought into the family. Still makes you a part of the family, though. So I don't. Make her the youngest. I don't disagree, but when it comes down to, you know, bay things, it does actually make a difference. Weird. Okay. That is definitely a word to describe it, probably. So, um... Yeah, no, I, there's many things that, I mean, I, I I like flowers. Um, not quite the area to be able to really pick them really well. Um... I like, uh, ooh, uh, strong calves, like tree trunks. I like those. Um... Well, I, she knows what she wants, and I support that. <laughs> <laughs> I do like dressing up fancy and making people fawn over me, but only for a night. I got, you know, I don't want. After a while, it becomes too much attention, you know. Uh, while she's talking, can I have Prudence stand up and walk towards the window and look out? Sure. There's a, there's a couple of them. Um, is there a, a particular direction or something you're wanting to look out? Uh, it doesn't really matter which. She just wants to look out the window and see where we're moving and okay. if we're moving sure uh the window that you look out is a pretty familiar sight of the rocky cliff walls of stone cloud stone wall cloud wall cloud wall mountains um not much that you can see beyond that because they go up so high you're clearly going between a pass but um the wind is while the wind is howling out there no amount of um, no amount of cold really seems to come in, and what does come in is like, actually, like what would be considered room temperature air, not like uh the the kind of in not intense but just hotter inside with the uh with the wood burning stove and such on. Okay, she'll stay by this window, but she'll say to Endelin, "This is very well insulated." Well, we spatchical love. It's a lot of stuff to keep where we can look out, but no one can really look in. Hmm. I mean, they, 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 they is very. Uh, sorry, you, you can continue. Sorry, I was gonna say they they can look in, but they they see what people want or what you know I want them to see. Continue, sin. Yeah, uh, I was just saying that the place that I stay in is is very drafty. I put a lot of hay underneath them. Um, there's a couple of bricks that are missing. Perhaps you should talk to Beckett about that. Yeah, this I didn't want to bother him. Made wasn't it? Why were they, why are they missing bricks? Uh, he's 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 very busy. I will talk to Beckett for you. Who's? You need to let me know these things. Who's Beckett? He's, he's a all... guy. <laughs> I, I, I guess uh, maybe landlord, um, kind of. I oh, don't huh. really call him that. He's our employer. I mean, he, he houses us, so it's like, um, you know, we, we do things for him, so. Oh, that's rather nice of him. I knew a guy with the last name of Beckett, but he wasn't nearly as nice as uh, as, as this Beckett you know. Oh, she leans against the window frame and crosses her arms. 
What was he like? What did he look like? Oh, goodness. Uh, this was about a decade ago. Um, gosh. He was... Uh, he's about yay tall. Um, nice broad shoulders. Um, the two things I can remember the most about him is his hairy chest and his large mustache. Um, it looks interesting. His hair was a bit long and shaggy and really unkempt, but it was, you know, kind of like... Well, yeah. See, and he points, she points to Lee Austin, when you wear it, it looks good, but when, when this Beckett wore it, it just seemed like it was all over the place and he was dirty, but he was a charmer. He was an absolute charmer. Who was his first name? It was Beckett. I saw what, that's what he told me. Said Beckett was the last name. No, Beckett was, you like. I'm so confused now, like in yeah. real life, but what did I miss? You did say last name, George. Oh, did I? Okay. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Okay. I didn't mean I, I to. I missed nothing. Back up. Back up, back up. Thank you. <laughs> so, whereabouts did you meet him? I want to say... About two... Two and a half days northeast or so of Perinolia. You know, have you ever have you ever been down there before? No. Oh, okay. Well, first off, you might want to keep him away. And she points over at Lee Austin. Why? Well, <laughs> um, oh god, can, hold on a second. Let me see. What's the best way to describe it? A lot of warrior women, a lot of them. I, I, they're, I mean, they're quite capable, but um. They they know what they want, and I respect that from them. They ask, trying not to grin both of the cup of tea. <laughs> like they know it. I'm confused. Okay. It's not scary, on. Don't do not think about that too much. Back to I I will, but you don't have to. Back to Beckett. <laughs> back to Beckett. He said that he was not nice. Uh, he was a bit... You know the term rowdy? Yes, of course. He was a rowdy boy. Oh, rowdy boy, Beckett. That doesn't necessarily constitute evilness or goodness. No, but it does sort of a pervasive, uh, you know... Just, a che just very cheeky. Mm. Prudence looks this. He had he had the bluster of a man probably half his age and uh but the skill to be able to back it up if anyone got lippy. You don't mind if I ask, um just because you know curiosity's getting the better of me we've got ourselves a bit of a journey ahead of us still. Um the uh the womanly uh centaur outside she's from is she from the margrave why do you want to not speak for her yeah well i spent a lot of time going around the, the plains of rothania uh, so as far as there's a lot of centaurs out there but um there's a certain look and cut to them but it's a bit different that she that she wears so i figured she must not be from the rothanian plains so therefore probably through the uh, the forest themselves. Well, wherever she's from, I'm sure she would tell you if she wanted to. Oh. I suppose you're right. I will say I've never seen a naked I've never seen a naked cat before. I could tell that there's no hair under all that all those clothes. tint has got a little bit of hair. He's on the nose. Austin weirdly looks at the door and frowns. Well, if you don't... Oh, hold on. Uh, I got another batch of cinnamon rolls ready. If you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and grab them. She, like, goes over to the stove and puts on a couple of the uh, pot... A couple of pot warmer... Or pot gloves, pot holders. Pot holders, yeah. And she, she bends the down... Nuts. She bends down in a certain way and just kind of will eventually look back at Lee Austin. <laughs> Poppy leans over to Sin... 
Is this is this floating? I, I, I'm I'm not sure. Um, it looks painful. <laughs> to watch and do. She takes out a giant <laughs> knife. And then begins oh. to, then begins to cut the the lines through the 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 rolls. I thought those were illegal. <laughs> I think it's a comb. Oh no! I, I got me a I got me a permit. It keeps my hair nice. Really <laughs> <laughs> absent watching. Very interested in the buns. <laughs> it, it's a, it's a real it's it's real interesting. In fact. Um, Tinkerers, I, I get as the magic can do a whole lot of stuff, but it seems that those ingenious bastards they were able to come up with some pretty interesting bits uh, and bubbles when they really put their minds to it. You think that um, Tindy and Moro want to come inside now? I don't mind going to look. If you want to warm up some water, water to be able to give to them, uh, I I don't know if. I can't really say that they could borrow m any mugs of mine, but if you've got any plate things that can hold hot water, uh, you could certainly take it out to them. I can maintain heat. It's fine. She holds her hands out impatiently. There's a second <laughs> second kettle in the back that's st just like steaming a little bit. She grabs it. On, on this shelf, um, what what are these trinkets? She hands the kettle over to Prudence. Um, I mean, I've been collecting them for so long, I sometimes forget what they're from. But they're from all over the place. People have been able to, uh, you know, they've, they've, some of them have been kind enough to leave me something to remember either them or where they're from by. This one right here, is, it's beautiful. Yeah, oh no, this one, yeah, it's, um, it's one of the... Uh, oh gosh, what is it? It's a it's a kind of a a ceremonial sea chain that they use in Krakova when they launch their ships for the first time. They have uh, you know normally you break a, a bottle uh, you know on the ship, wish it good luck, but they use these ceremonial chains. One just seemed to be broken, and then instead of taking this couple of chain links, they went ahead and uh, a sailor gave it to me. As they're talking, Prudence uh, walks towards the back of the house, pushes open the window. Have fun! And she jumps on the windowsill and hops out onto the cart. As you walk towards the back part, um, you get that you get that feeling, you know, when you're that you see in movies where like the camera stays, but like the hall kind of zoom zooms in, but also but then also it zooms out. It's it's that weird perspective. Um, not so this. Yeah, yeah. You you're able to move to the back. Yeah. It's just, it's, like, disorienting, but not to the point where you, like, haven't, there's no, like, any sort of effect or anything. It's just, it's just unsettling. I see. Uh, Akovi, you said. Yeah, um, someone was up there near the wolf mart. I think Krakova's over there. I haven't gone there myself. Been a bit of a dirty business going on there in, in like, Kr uh, Krakova, Mogal. That's why I typically stay near the plains. Anywhere south of the forest has been far warmer, but also, you know, just a little bit um, calm. This other one here, though, um, that's a petrified mushroom. That's from Wormwood, for sure. Those those cheeky gnomes, they grow them uh, and try to hand them over and make them think that they're, they're valuable. If someone offers you a petrified mushroom and insists that they're worth something, they're really not worth anything. But I kept it as a good reminder. It has such interesting colors, though. It's it's like um, if, if, I'm, if I move my head, it changes. Well, uh, it, that, now that is actually a special paint that I made up. See, I may not be a, uh, any sort of writer or whatnot, but I do paint in the meantime. And I mix a couple of colors to where if you, the light hits it a certain way, it changes. Never heard of such a thing. Um, it's really interesting. Yeah. I I'd, 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 um, I don't know if you've got time, but I can certainly show you my paint set. I have time. I, I would be really interested in your paints. We will uh, go to Prudence as she hops outside 
as uh, she goes to grab a, um, as Endelin grabs something long and wooden in, in a, a case form, uh, she goes outside to meet up with Tendi and Mara. Prudence lands on the cart. She looks really irritated. The winds. I thought to you warm water. The winds died down a little, uh, just a little. Uh, Tendi is inside the cart, and just something lands on the cart, and Tendi just shrieks. <laughs> it is only me, Tendi. <gasps> Pru Pru fell. No, I left. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've brought you something warm. <gasps> um, the horses had spooked a bit, so Mara is calming them down, and then uh, she looks at Prudence. How's it in the cabin? I don't. Annoying. How, How so? Yeah. Don't worry about it. How is it out here in the winter? Cold. Is there anything I can do to help you warm up? Would you like to come in? I'm okay out here. Tendi, do you want to go in and warm up? Tendi does not want to leave Mara alone, but Tendi is also cold. Well, Ma Mara will be you, okay. Luckily for you, Elizabeth, I don't wish to go back inside. Would you like to take my place? Okay. <laughs> Prudence's <laughs> tail is like just flicking back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> She's so fucking mad. She doesn't look mad, though. Does she ever? <laughs> no, she doesn't. She's got a good poker face. <laughs> uh, I will warn you, if you go inside, you will have to agree to contract, but it protects both parties. Tendi can do that. Tendi read good. And Tendi will take off their scarf and give it to Prudence. Thank you. Aww. Is it moving? Like the house is walking, right? The house is walking, walking, and it's along. it's like it's it's like it as as something would walk on just a, a house on two legs. It does it. It's not like march marching band step where the top part doesn't actually shift. It like the 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 house bounces along with the footsteps of the of the feet. Uh, Tendi, would you like me to carry you back in so you don't fall? Yes, Tendi does not want to fall. Uh, Prudence will scoop Tendi up. Hold on to my neck. And then she'll hop back to the windowsill. And open the window. Man, I wanted to make that Batman claw thing that you shoot. <laughs> and it has like a string. But I could not remember the name of it. And that's okay. Batarang? No, that's the like he throws. Bat grip or something like that. Bat grappling hook. Grappling hook. Grappling hook. <laughs> that's a bitch. Batling hook. I only remember it hook. because of, uh... <laughs> Uh, freaking Gravity Falls, Mabel with her grappling hook. Guys, guys, <laughs> we're missing the opportunity. Catling hook. Uh... Tendy says no thank you to Prudence and makes a catling hook. <laughs> <laughs> I have to now. I have no choice. <laughs> Decision's been made for me. But I won't be able to be catty when I come back inside. When you shoot it, it goes meow. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when it retracts, it just goes. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> this is the best day ever. Yes. We make the magic a catling hook, or am I carrying you in? <laughs> no, I've made a catling hook. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> uh, uh, so we'll, we'll, uh, Tendi, you you fire off your catling hook, and it whizzes <laughs> over to the the window and hooks on where everyone can see like. Uh, the whatever the claws look like on this catling hook, kind of just inside the the window and kind of pull taut. Um, and shortly after, you see Tendi. But we'll let uh, Prudence and Mara chat for a bit before we go back inside and see what Tendi yeah. sees. Uh, Prudence, Prudence leans over the side of the cart. I think Sin left some of his tea leaves here. Would you like me to make you a cuppa? 
or it's a warm you. Yeah, that that sounds nice. <laughs> she begins busying herself with it. How long has it been that we've been walking? Uh, okay. So the cart is attached to the horse, and the or the house. The house is pulling the cart. Yeah, it's it's okay. It's towing it, but the horses are walking. Um, you know. And I yeah, I am yeah. not yeah. Mara would not allow the horses to be attached to a oh. house that can't ensure their safety. Okay. So okay, so she's got the horses. Or she's at least paying attention to them. Mara, and... it's it's been um, it's been about three hours. Okay. Oh wow! Did it feel like three hours inside? It sure did not. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, three hours. Felt like a week. <laughs> we missed you guys so much. <laughs> it's been three hours. That it did not feel that long in there. Um. Bays can have that effect. Mm. She hands you a steaming mug of tea. It singes her hand and she drops it. No! <laughs> England gets very upset. <laughs> she was very interested in you, the witch. Did she ask any questions? She did, but we did not answer. Thank you. She wants to uh, know where you were from. She said that she did not look like you were from the Rothenian plains. Well, she got that right, didn't she? Mm. What else did she ask? She didn't ask as more she talked. So what did she say? A lot, and not anything at all. She seems, maybe, perhaps, to just be lonely. She uh, is not the Baba Yaga. She is the daughter of the Baba Yaga. Both enough. And not to be trusted, I say. I agree. <laughs> or at the very least, not pleasant to be around. Prudence just kind of sighs and puts her hands behind her head, relaxing in the cart. I don't know if she's necessarily dangerous, but I will be glad to be done of this. Although I find myself in better company out here. Mara winks. In scene. <laughs> we uh, tend to you zip through the air um, with uh, with the retractable grappling hook, uh, catling hook that you had made. Uh, and all of you, after seeing the hooks enter into the window, um, shortly after is, uh, is Tendi. Uh, Tendi, the scene in front of you, uh, you're, you're not quite aware that the passing of time or anything like that between going outside and inside. Um, but you feel like slightly odd coming, coming in through the window. Um, but you see that, um... Sin is looking at um, kind of like a painter's palette of all sorts of different colors um, that like you, if you look at it in a certain way as you kind of climb through your eyes notice that the paint itself sort of changes color depending on how you look at it. Sin standing next to um, Endolin who at this point has a bo uh, an easel and a canvas and is painting something and keeps looking over at Lee Austin. Um, and everyone else is in there uh, enjoying the, the warmth. And it is certainly warm. It is, uh, if you were to have your warm clothes on still, after about 10 minutes, it would start getting far too hot to keep them on. But that's just because of the massive shift between uh, temperatures. Uh, but Endem looks over and she goes, Oh, it looks like we got another, we got, we've got, um, I, your friends called you Tendi, yes? Mm -hmm. Alright, well, before you really hop down from that counter there and you hear, uh, Pilteroy off in the corner kind of give like a unblinking look as the body slinks behind some, uh, behind like a, a, a couch or a, a ottoman. 
because I have to, uh, I'm sure they probably told you, um, the, the hot-tempered one probably, um, told you that you have to agree to a few things, if that's, if that's alright with you. Can I ask a question? A sure. A clarifying question that's very important to me. You said the body slinks? Does the head <laughs> stay where it is, like a chicken, when you move it? Yep. The head just stays the same, and the neck just like extends, and the body goes away. Yeah, it just it just happened to be a, a a foot or so from something to hide behind, and the body just kind of just slinks back while the head just stays there, because uh, the neck kind of oh, God. like there's there is a limit to how long this neck for Peltoroy can be. It's just no one's really seen the extent and the limit of it. I have never loved a cat more in my life than this horrible Furby creature. <laughs> than this cursed cat. Than this cursed, cursed creature. It's got like it's got the oh god, what's his name? Lord Farquaad hair hairstyle. That's what it oh, is. No. no, it fucking doesn't. I Take said that back right now. straight. It's <laughs> straight hair that comes down to about the jawline. Yes. No. Oh. Does he look like the uh, Jack the Jack from the new Puss in Boots movie? I have no idea. I uh, unfortunately oh have not seen that movie. Uh, if I could draw while also DMing, I would draw a quick sketch of what it looks like, but I am unfortunately not very good. Oh, it's so upsetting. Oh, I love it very much. Okay. <laughs> um, she, she had asked Tendy to... Um... Agree, agree to the things, and she and she can tell you. We don't have to read them again. Uh, Tendi looks at Poppy to see what to do. Poppy nods, but uh, you you do see Poppy is just kind of like sitting there, like she does not look happy to be there. She looks like she's forced to be sitting here, but in reality, she's just forcing herself. <laughs> uh, Tendi will agree to this stuff. Perfect. Well, hey, welcome in. I've got nice sweet tea. I've got, um, I've got some s sweet rolls. They're still, uh, I got another batch. Oh no, actually. <laughs> yep. No, I believe the next batch is ready. Um, hold on. I need sin. Um, watch, watch my paints, dear. And she walks over to the the oven again, putting on her pot holders, and just opens it up and goes. <sighs> God, it's so hot in here. Um. She agreed to, right? Huh? She yeah. She agreed to, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. I love that absolutely none of us trust this woman. She's so nice to us, and we all are like, no, I do not think so. We often trust her. Yeah, oh, we often probably trust guy. anybody that watches his ass when he walks away. Finn is holding her paints. Sin trusts untrustworthy women. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what he does. <laughs> Teddy will go over and sit with Poppy. Okay. And just kind of lean over and whisper some stuff to Poppy. You see, before you, uh, as you sit down, she kind of whips out a contraption that you've um, only seen once before. Uh, maybe as some sort of like vendor in the Tinkerer's District, but it is clearly a knife, like a, like a switchblade knife, but also on one side it is a it is a comb. And so she uses the blade to like cut the rolls and then uses the other part to kind of like Get, make sure she fixes yeah. her bangs real quick before uh, before looking back. Is thought this thing is illegal. <laughs> it's not illegal in the Feywild, so... Oh. <laughs> yeah. Indy, you should the one, try... <laughs> the one thing I remember of the Feywild. <laughs> you should try pastry. Very good. Does it have, like, frosting on it? It has the best frosting. It is very delicious. Does frosting have milk in? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I didn't think it. She looks at, what's her name? Um, Endolin. I typically like to use sugar, uh, vanilla, and... Uh, there's a thing that, I don't, I don't know if you've ever been to the Rothanian Plains, but they've been working on taking oats since it's a lot, there's no lot of water and livestock. Uh, they make milk out of oats, if you believe it. Hmm. It's, 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 will absolutely take like an arms full of them. 
like four of them maybe oh uh she looks at, she, she's like side eyes the often guess i'll make another batch then <laughs> all right now i'm gonna get back to me painting but um you know uh, go go ahead poppy you were saying something rather interesting weren't you go ahead continue i was saying something interesting well, everything you say is interesting love so far no, I just genuinely don't remember what I was saying. If you could you, remind you were, me what you were I was talking saying. about, you were talking about the horses. Yeah, oh. one was named Kenneth. That's such a unique name for a horse. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I was actually saying something and just forgot <laughs> because I do that a lot. So. Yeah, yeah, well, um, there's Loras and there's Kenneth, and Loras is French. French, or what's French in Midgard. He's French. He's French, <laughs> and he's he, he's he's a wannabe fashion designer. He's pretty good, though. Uh, he helps me with my sewing sometimes, uh, specifically just with his opinions. He doesn't have like appendages for it, like he doesn't have thumbs, so he can't really help me make it for real. But he's got a, he's got an eye for fashion. His, his bicep is a little bit bigger. You're right. Could you look over here for a second, Blondie? Perfect. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Cindy, this has been happening the whole time. They're flirting, I think. Kind of icky. Yeah. I don't know. Um, You see how it goes from, like, a dark teal to more like a, a sheen of, like, gunmetal gray you think that probably i don't i know what you're thinking you can't see it yet you have to be patient sit there do you want another sweet roll thank you love he's so <clears throat> he's so much cuter when he doesn't talk <clears throat> tendy speak <clears throat> <clears throat> tendy does a whole lot of throat clearing in lee Austin's direction uh <laughs> you realize <laughs> you you see as if you weren't really paying attention to it but it was always there um the the <laughs> oh god Piltroy um has has gone behind something and has appeared closer behind something else to Poppy and Tendi and it's sort of out, out of the corner of both your eyes. You see, like, Piltorize, like, just look. I like to imagine that Wicket, who is, like, kind of curled up in my scarf right now, is, like, peeking out and, like, looking directly at the cat in the same manner. Uh, Piltorize seems to make a little bit of a, of a look, like, a brief, like... But is is kind of looking between you and Tendi, and Tendi, you you've you've seen other other Tabaxi and stuff before, right? Is it a Tabaxi? No, but you, okay, you've okay. seen other cats then yes, before. Yes, I've seen other. Yes. Okay. Yes. This cat purposefully, slowly, just prances each purposeful step. Closer and closer to Lee Austin while eyeing you the whole time. Oh no! And then Tendi keeping is staring at this fucker, keeping its head at the level it's at. The body jumps up into the lap of Lee Austin and, <gasps> and, and begins to kind of like make biscuits. That gasp was absolutely in character. Oh, 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 oh! I'm yeah, I'm so sorry, love. I didn't know. Yeah. Um, Piltroy, you need to get off the man's lap, okay? I know... Uh, you, we're not trying to be rude. It's not... You, you don't want Piltroy on Lee Austin, is that right? I can fix that. That's Tindy's lap. Oh, uh, of course. Of course. Piltroy, get off his lap. Get off his lap. <laughs> Lee Austin's like frowning, petting it. Piltroy, <gasps> get off his lap! Oh my, the betray top ten anime betrayals. <laughs> Lestain is fucking betraying Lestain. God okay. fucking bless it. Lee, <laughs> Lee Austin is betraying everyone that loves him tonight. 
All right, look. Um, I'm going to him first. Silent. <laughs> ten, 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 started this. Tendi, I've, I've tried. I said it three times. I don't. I mean, I, uh, I'm sure that once Piltroy's bored, he'll hop right off. I need to finish this painting, though. We're almost there. Hey, Tendi. Yes. Why does it look like the cat has a grudge against you specifically? Tendi does not know what Tendi has done to this weird long Furby cat. <laughs> What's a Furby? <laughs> <laughs> Furby is from what's the name of the place I'm from? Uh Nuria Natal. <laughs> Furby is God from Nuria Natal. God from <laughs> Furby is God of Mischief. Teddy oh does God. not trust long Furby. <laughs> I wouldn't trust a long <laughs> Dying here, Katie. Can you stop? <laughs> Kelly, stop it! I'm trying to get my composure back so I can be angry. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I will. I'll interrupt this for a moment, uh, since <laughs> I don't. Man. Since, since I don't think uh, that, that Prudence and Mara see it, but can you please both roll me a perception check? Like oh no! <laughs> God, this 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 song is just so perfect for this this setting. Uh, okay. Thank you. Continue. Maybe, do you think that I should also draw Lee Austin? Just to, like, see if I can one-up her? I don't know. I feel like I want to. Tendi thinks Poppy draws best Lee Austin. I, I have an entire sketchbook filled with just Lee Austin. He's Tendi very knows. <laughs> I had to practice for his birthday card. Okay, okay, I'll do it. Alright. Why is this the funniest fucking episode of Midgard we've ever done and we've not done anything? Alright, I, I, you know, my arm's getting a, I'm getting a hand cramp again, so, um... Here, Sin, if you want to paint on a different canvas for a little bit, you can. If you want to try, just make sure that you you dip the brush in the water between colors. I know it seems like it all kind of blends together, but believe me, it makes a difference. Um, uh, thank you. She uh, and then she sets her brush down and kind of, you know, shakes her uh, kind of shakes her hand and and stretches her fingers and then she goes over to the ottoman that is sitting next to Lee Often. She goes, "All right." You've been such a good lad being quiet and pretty and all of that. Now, I need you to tell me, what's a guy like you, a big brute like you, doing in the middle of these mountains? With the same all the things that we're all doing. Well, but he looks like a northerner. Yeah, and you don't look like you're from around here either. Tendi is also not from around here. Tendi and has I'm questions. I'm not from around here. I can finally say it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't think anyone lives here, so everyone's not from around here, but... What's your question, Tendi? She puts a hand on Leofton's knee. Uh, she... she... Tendi knows Endolin's name at this point, right? Because this would be real weird if they don't. Yeah. Okay. Um, Endolin is flirting with Leofton? Yes? She looks over at Leofton to get, like, a... Uh, a confirmation of whether or not this is this is true. He kind of just. And like... should know. Yeah, you're you're the one doing it. I think you should know. <laughs> oh, I I'm flirting. Yeah, I, I mean, hopefully it wasn't oh, that obvious. Oh, Tendi is sorry. Leofston is married already. <gasps> um, um. Oh, is he? Yes. <laughs> Tendi just <laughs> stares at Lee Austin. <laughs> Lee Austin goes to explain it's been Lee a while. Lee Austin is then... being very rude 
to prove well, it. Well, let, 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 him, let him explain, love, in, in your own words. Did she die? Do you need consoling? It's consoling. <laughs> the Austin, like... Like, he's staring at Tendi. Prudence. Wait. Wait, are you married to Prudence? Lee Austin is adopted dad. Is is not right, being right, right. very good right now. I'm not sure I follow love. I, I, I don't get it. He's just been sitting in the chair. Earl of Sin. <laughs> Sin's on his 17th cinnamon roll. Like, I don't understand what's wrong here. Why are you guys being so weird? <laughs> <laughs> Not even once going, where, is, where does she get the yeast for all of this? <laughs> she just keeps making it. <laughs> Leoson looks to, to Endolin. I'm in the mountains to go pay my respects to the gods. It is almost the time of Yule, so it's the time that my people honor Woltan and Thor and, and Freya with, with gifts. So I thought the best place to do that would be at the temple of all the gods. Uh, she, but she said you were married. Are married. He's married to his work. <laughs> Lee pops into the crossroads right now, and he's just like, Prudence isn't here right now, but <gasps> there he is. <gasps> that didn't mean nothing. I didn't say shit yet. I'm planning out loud. Shut up. <laughs> Put out loud a little nicer, Oh, yeah, huh? that, that good song by Ed Sheeran. I like it. Man, that's my favorite Panic at the Disco song. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Austin is a bigamist, you guys. Come on. Lee, Lee Austin Just reaches out for Endolin's hand and pats it. <gasps> she puts uh, she mm. puts yours on, hers on top. He kind of, like, he sits it for a second and looks at his other hand, but it's, like, petting Pilteroy, but he's, so he doesn't want to, like, take it away. I appreciate your hospitality, and you are very kind and been very sweet to my companions, but I am indeed otherwise engaged. Oh, oh, that's understandable. She, like, leans a little bit closer, and she goes, You know, if there's, a, you know, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that you would be missing out on, but and nobody really would know. I'm sure once they step out of here, um, time works a little bit differently inside this hut. But yeah, it's okay. It, it, it's, it's, Does detect yeah. magic break her dumb contract? No, detect magic would magic. detect whether there is magic around you. Yes, correct. Can I use it to detect if there's magic around Lee, uh, Lee Austin? Um, sure. Teddy uh, hates whatever is happening right now. You can um, so you can you can cast it either as a ritual. Or you can cast it as a normal, uh, I believe it's an action. Or no, it's a minute, isn't it? Uh, Let me look. No, it's concentration up to 10 minutes. Yes, yeah. but to yeah, cast it, Yeah, it is one it, action. Though, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, you can either cast it uh, spending an action uh, and spending a spell slot, or you can cast it with, as a ritual, uh, which means you cast it for 10 minutes plus the uh, amount of time it takes to normally cast it, and it's free. I would like to do that second one. Okay. Are we talking outside minutes or inside minutes? <laughs> inside minutes is all, is relative to you casting the spell since you are inside. Okay, I would like to do that. Okay. So this the, the conversation that's going on between Endolin and Lee Austin. If she's like, as she's like, you don't want to pass this out, love it, you know. And Tenny, you begin to, I believe it's uh, verbal components, right? Yes. So, so you start to kind of chant a little bit or speak magical <laughs> words. And, and you just goes, why why Lee Austin being so weird and their pupils get real big? Um, so that would be, so 10 minutes go by of that. Mm. And, and, and you'll be able to, to cast the spell. Dope. Meanwhile. You can step away from me if I need 10 minutes. Yeah, that's totally fine. Meanwhile, Prudence and Mara. Well, oh, she just went she to just left. Uh, all right, so she she went to go pee, and she uh, said she'll trot back up and catch up to you. So, Mar or, uh, Prudence, you are currently uh, alone on the cart in the biting cold. But Mara's the one that did the 19 perception. Oh, God! 
Yeah, that's why I don't see anything. Because <laughs> I'm alone. In the cart. <laughs> pissed off. What's, uh, what are you, uh, you know, what are you so pissed off about? Oh, I don't know. It's a mystery to everybody. Except mm. for me. Okay. Intendi. Um, clearly. <laughs> you... You while 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 she's while Mara may have been gone for at least a minute or so now. Um, you you're looking around, kind of trying to place your eyes anywhere but the hut. I would assume. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and you don't you don't see anything out of the ordinary. It is just uh, it's it's almost the same mountain pass after the same mountain pass, but um. You feel you feel uneasy. I know when you left the the hut out the window, the weird perspective thing was uneasy. This is different. This is a familiar feeling. You feel like you're being watched. It stands up and starts to survey the area. Um, you see, you see Mara kind of uh, catching back up. She's not making a full sprinted effort. She'll she'll be back in. Um, I don't know. I guess however long it takes for her to get back. That was two minutes ago. I'm going to assume probably another four minutes. I'm going to stand on the highest part of the cart and keep <laughs> looking around. Mm, make a quick acrobatics check for me because it is not a smooth ride and, and the cart on, on top is still covered. It's like a covered canvas wagon, just the metal parts underneath. Is happening tonight. Uh, I'm gonna use yeah. my inspiration. Hold okay. On. Jamie's back. Fifteen. Okay. Did I miss anything? Mara, yeah. you 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 stopped while the cart kept going to take a quick um, leak and uh, Prudence. You see, as you're trotting back up to catch up and presume your your travel outside of the hut, um, Prudence, you see, stands up um, in the cart only to like have a rock get hit. And she sways, uh, but still manages to, like, her user, using her tail to probably maintain her balance. And um, as you kind of approach to, pr- to basically, like, what's all this then? Um, mm-hmm. You get the feeling also that you are being watched, um, but you see this. What looks okay. to be like a, uh, a, a small black dot, perhaps maybe like something... Maybe a piece of dust or something has gotten um, gotten into your eye or something like that. But this this dot gets bigger. Um, it uh, continues to grow as it looks like a uh, an upside down wine glass, uh, all all in black. Uh, and as it continues to come closer and closer. Um, it appears to be a woman in a dress on some sort of uh, you've I don't know if you've seen a lot of some sort of engineered flying bird slash uh, God, well, how would I describe it? If I, if I say ornithopter, would you know what that is? Yes. So, like from Avatar? No, it's... Sort of. uh, it's yeah, I mean, it looks like... Here, I'll share it in the chat. Well, it's like a... Well, no, like the blue Avatar. Oh. The they have, Avatar. like, the dragonfly things? Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. It's like okay. a... It, it's a... It, it's some sort of engineered flying device, but uh, the closer that this thing... This woman gets... Um, it is made of bone and of, uh, flesh, like, patched flesh wings. Oh, that doesn't sound good. He's a, it's in the mm-hmm. sky? Mm-hmm. But I can tell she's wearing a dress. You can, because it is, like, one of those, you've seen some fancy people at Zobek wear these ridiculous dresses you've never understood. It clearly, their legs are not as wide as this dress, but it's, like, something underneath like structurally makes the dress just seem that much further out, you know, at the waist and, and down. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, um, and it isn't until she's probably about, she's coming in the direction of you in the hut. Um, 
but it isn't. She's not quite there yet. She'll probably be there in about 30 seconds. Uh, do, does Prudence notice this or just Mara? Just Mara. Yeah. What's this then? <laughs> what is it? What's your sensor I see? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Angie's first Lord of the Rings reference! Yay! <laughs> 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 is 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 that a woman in a in a dress flying towards us? What? Prudence looks up. I believe that's flesh and bone. Prudence puts her hands on her fireworks wand. I'm not quite sure if time passes correctly here, Mara, but I'm going to shoot this off anyway. And she <clears throat> shoots off her fireworks wand. Uh, so that it will streak past the windows of the hut. That's so smart. Okay. And then she calls out to the lady, Friend or foe! Okay. Uh, business! The... <laughs> what business? <laughs> the uh, inside, uh, you guys can hear, uh, after, after a moment of probably more uh, animosity between... Um, you know, Tendi and Piltaroy and uh, the continuous flirting from uh, the witch and Sin, uh, Lee Austin and Sin. You probably finished a, a pretty. Uh, a, give me actually, Sin. Give me a performance check. I'm gonna see. Okay. I'm gonna see how this pa painting is. If that firework can... buzzed past. He might have screwed it up just now. It, it Maybe. Like, excuse. It's like painting, and, and that's it goes by. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Sin, yeah. I want you to describe the painting, but I want you to use that eight to essentially muck it up as a real short screech, like screech comes by the uh, the window. Okay. Uh, he was drawing... Cinnamon rolls. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he, was, he was drawing a picture of a bowl of fruit. And uh, on top of the bowl of fruit was a cinnamon Bugs. <laughs> okay. Uh, and how do you mess it up as the... I'll say the, the time of the screech is like literally less than a second. But it is loud. And there's some popping. But it's like it's you hear like maybe one pop um, as it screeches by the, the window at like an impossible speed. Uh, Sin was putting the finishing touches. He he was smiling. Uh, he had. Uh, he was very proud of what he had accomplished, and so he was. He was. He all he had to do was just kind of like swirl the top of that cinnamon roll to give it just the perfect icing look. And when that firework zoomed past, it startled him, and. The icing swirl turned into a weird face. Like, it just, it looks spooky. Hmm. Well. Buddy. You all seem to be a little startled by the immediate screech. Um, and Endelin kind of goes, Well, that's a bit odd. And then we go back to Prudence and Mara. In response to your, what was it, friend or foe? Yeah. What business do you have here? I think is what Mara said. Okay. Yeah. Uh, both of your both of your questions, the sound of the bones grinding on bones as the wings flap and she comes closer and closer. Um, you can tell. You can tell as she answers. Uh, you get a better glimpse of what she looks like. She is emaciated far far beyond what this dress seems to purport it the you can see the the parts of her dress that is like you know how like an umbrella has those you know arms that kind of come out yes. and if and if a if, if it's been used enough 
the the fabric between the two the all the all the arms kind of droops a little bit mm -hmm. um imagine a imagine that but in like so almost looking like just cloth draped over bony spider legs um mm -hmm. There is, uh, is and, and tattered, of course, with some nice ruffles uh, at the at the top, right, but right before um, her upper body. Um, her, you can tell that she is hunched over, and it is, it, it's a fi it's a fireplace. That's the clicking. Just, just the, just the, you know. With abandoned shack with fireplace. And uh, random clicking. It's a fire crackling. That's not what it smells. Okay, well. <laughs> Dorian, uh, have you ever been near a fireplace in your life? I, I mean, digital fireplaces all the time, baby. Every day. <laughs> a fireplace in this economy? Uh, she has a theater curtain veil that shrouds what you can clearly see is extremely wrinkled features. And you're not sure, but you think she has an extra set of arms underneath her regular arms. Spider lady. And, and uh, her face, which is so sunken in and wrinkled that it is just black. There's no eyes at all, and her lips and mouth are so inwardly wrinkled that all that is is black. Think of Oogie Boogie Man from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, um, my first crushes, okay. She, oh, great. It, <laughs> into the into the no. fire, out of the out of the something or whatever it's called. Out of the pan into the fire. Yeah, out of the pan into the fire. Um, she screeches <laughs> out and it echoes uh, across, it, all through this mountain pass. To, in response to your question, she goes, What are you doing following me, house? What's I have bad news. Like I heard what are you audible. doing. Okay. Yeah, what, are you, what are you doing, and that's it. What are you doing following my house? Yep. What are you doing following my house? I fucking knew it! With bitch, I knew and, it! And, uh, and okay, uh, we'll go back real quick, as clearly... What was a screech outside is a continued screech, but it's more of like, what are you doing, mouse? Uh, and Endelin kind of stops and goes, mouse. Well, uh, it's you know, if you could take, if you want, you could take some of these to, uh, rolls to go. Um, sorry, love, I can't give you the painting, but you're gonna have to leave uh, right now. Uh, it seems that um, we uh, have reached our destination. I know it doesn't sound like it's been a full eight hours. But trust me, you can ask uh, the, the, the half-mechanical uh, Tieflin and the Centaur. It's certainly been that much. Um, door's right there. Feel free to take a, a, a roll to go if you wish to do so. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, a quick, quick, um, what was in, in, what was in the tea? Oh, it, it's you just, a, it, it's like, it's a sugar, sugar mint and a little bit of basil. Uh, it, it, you, what? you know, you, you could take a packet and you can study it later, but please. Why do you sound like you're on? panicking? Did we see the firework? Um, yes, and, and before, and before, before we get to the rest of it, uh, Tandy, I'll tell you what you can see. Um, yes, please. Do. As you hear the screeching of the firework... You are blinded. Oh shit! This entire oh, place is so full of magic; it is overwhelming. You are essentially stunned. What a time for it, huh? What a time! <laughs> uh, Tendy just starts disassociating. Their eyes just start going in weird directions. <laughs> uh, Piltroy, Piltroy hops off of Leoston's lap and kind of gives a. Uh, right. Um. Yeah. No. Here, here's a packet. Sin. Uh. I appreciate what you've done. Uh. That bowl was so lovely. You did a great job. Um. You know. Endolin. What? What is happening? Um. You know. I think it's probably best that you don't ask. Um. Remember, we made we made some agreements, and if you want to ensure your safety, you better leave now. I can I can handle what is about to happen. But the more that you stay in here, the less it's going to be. He often nods and puts his helmet back on. We appreciate okay. the hospitality. Thank you. You're right. Good. 
Do we leave out the door or the window? The front door, please. I don't know this window business. It was kind of rude of that lady, but I'm pretty sure she was miffed. Uh, uh, with with a shield on his back, he, he goes over to Tendi and picks up, picks them up. Hey, Tendi hey. is like a cat picked up by their scruff, just immediately, just limp. <laughs> and come on. It's just second. I have, I have no, a few more these. Few, few more of these rolls. I have another pocket Finn. to put it in. Finn. Buddy, we gotta wrap it up. We gotta go. I grab Sin and pull. Yep. <laughs> Sin goes. <laughs> Thank you, Adele. We appreciate that. Awesome. You go to open the door, and Mara and, and Prudence, you can see this with an almost uh, unnatural speed. The ornithopter, uh, the this bone flesh bird, mechanical bird, and um, the true owner of this hut. Uh, come in a absolute dive bomb towards it where um, in a swift motion the ornithopter takes off as she has landed and kind of slow just right before she hits the ground her dress billows a little bit and she whoop, 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 right on the front of the door and as Leofson you go to open the door you see this incredibly tall figure all you can see is almost to the, the top of her dress um and she looks, she looks, this is the, this is the, the, the image of what you see crawling, hunched through the door. Crawling or standing, I'm confused. And she goes, hunt, like, just ducking down underneath, and she goes, Okay. I didn't say you could have any guests. You're supposed to be house-sitting, you little wench. The Austin's like, backing up with the group, kind of keeping his arm around them, but, like, with Tendi, like, footballed on his arm. He's trying to, like, trying to skirt around. It's clearly her focus is on, like, on Endolin. Endolin, Endolin kind of goes, oh, no, okay, L listen, Endolin, I can explain. It's, I, I was really, I was just really bored. And look, these people, they wanted some warm show, uh, and I wanted to make, I want you know, you say my rolls are disgusting, but you don't have a proper taste bud to appreciate tea and sweet rolls, and uh, I was bored. Piltoroy likes them. And she goes, she looks, her, her eyeless sockets look at all, the lot, all four of you at the same time and go, Get out of me, bloody house, right now! Got it. We're done. Bye! Leofs and Sandy just books it. <laughs> you see, Come on! in almost the same motion of her going in the house, Prudence and Mara, you see everyone just... Like, as if it were, like, you don't know what was going on in there, but they seem to just be kind of squeezing each other through the uh, the door frame as you all exit. And the house, um, like, kind of does a thing where it jumps, and you all kind of, like, get tossed, but you all land just fine. Um, but the but the horse, the cart, is still being, is still tied to it as you are, uh, it's quick, uh, Mara being didn't left let behind. the horses get tied to it. No, but yeah. the cart, the cart is tied to it. It's being towed. Well, don't tie it. <laughs> tie it now. Uh, can I can I work towards jumping towards the back of the cart to untie it or cut it with a knife? Yeah, no, you could do it. You could do it easily enough. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So uh, the the rope falls uh, slack and to the ground as the cart rolls to a stop. Uh, as you all are in the biting cold, and actually you can. Uh, the, the the house itself uh, takes some rather large long steps up one of the the other cliff face as it continues more north and you can hear barely just muffled <laughs> and then like it trails off I imagine like I imagine like Lee Austin like landed on his back and he's just like laying there like holding Tendy to his chest well, she wasn't a fairy, so you were. Ugh, never mind. Poppy Did flies you all have down. Have a good time. No, it was awful. Anyway, let's go. What did we all learn? Am I actually stunned? Oh, I learned you're, you're, a lot. You are no longer stunned after after. Yeah. Wapsley Austin in the chest. I think oh. we've all learned that Mara has good instincts. Yes, I, I agree. Mara goes to hook the horses back up to the cart. I guess I learned that um, some paints can change color. 
<laughs> Sinus <laughs> learned fucking nothing. Imagine if he says that, he's slowly bringing a cinnamon rub up to his face. Yep. <laughs> his pockets are full. He looks like a kid coming out of the uh, the kitchen, hiding shit from his parents. <laughs> I love Sin. Hey, Sin. I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I'm saying this as a friend. Know that I'm saying this as a friend, okay? If... You're, you ever get the chance to go to the Feywild? Don't. <laughs> okay? You will get stuck there immediately. Uh, just me in particular. Well, you automatically went towards the food and was like, Ooh, sugar, let's eat. And you didn't even like really listen to me. And I specifically said, don't eat food made by Fey. She was really nice, and she was offering... A lot of people seem really nice, is the thing. But there's this thing called lying and trickery that people, especially Faye, tend to do. And even if you tend to trust someone, they can still end up being pretty bad if they're Faye. I mean... I we're Faye human. But um, th there's nothing wrong with the Simon rules. I was able to... Um, I, yeah. I still have... Quite uh, we, th we, the thing is, that's called that's called dumb luck. Um, you might not get so lucky next time, though. So, like, if we're probably not going to, but if we ever do go to the Fey Wild, we'll make sure to pack just a bunch of sweets for you. But when you're there, can't eat, can't eat. No, you can eat the stuff that you bring, but don't eat from other people. But how can I tell the difference? Because some. Um... Well, if you bring the food, you should know that you brought it. No, I mean, you, you, you told me not, not to take food from this person, and this person was not doing anything to the food, so... i just going to walk in between the two of them. We need to get going. I'm cold and tired. Get in the cart. Okay. Okay. As you hitch the horses back up to the cart, and make preparations to continue. Uh, Prudence and Sin, you at least at some point do notice that um, there's uh, often the distance um, after, as you've kind of passed through most of the of the clearing of the Cloud Wall Mountains. Uh, there seems to be a structure uh, a few you know mountains uh, away uh, down to the down to the south of where you are. Um, so the uh, the trip, as far as it goes, will take uh, a final three days as we have Lee Austin and Poppy and Mara explain after such a crazy event of meeting somebody who has absolutely did nothing wrong, um, what, what else could possibly happen? But we'll have Lee Austin, what, as you get a long rest in and everybody, uh, you go into the next day and what happens? The energy in the studio is real weird. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, everyone, like, I mean, I feel like there has been a faction shift in the group of the... <laughs> of, um... Weird. A lot of, a lot of feelings have been hurt. Uh, intentionally or otherwise. Um... And I think... <laughs> <laughs> so like Austin kind of like gravitates to Sin because like she didn't technically do anything wrong. She was just she man. Uh, listen, she A didn't. White man. <laughs> no. White man. <laughs> Blue, thank you very much. This is the most masculine thing you have ever done, yeah, Kelly. White. I'm so I'm so mad. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. <laughs> and he is working. I don't know if I should be proud of you or not. This sucks. <laughs> so, so the Austin kind of like tries to hang out with Sin more. Probably, they probably go hunting or something like to get to bring back some meat. Try to smooth things over. Uh, and I imagine they don't find anything. So it's just a, a bro's day away from the away from the girls trying to figure out what happened. Like this. It's like if you ever go deer hunting, you're just there for like five hours covered in deer piss and you don't find anything. You're like, well, at least we got covered in deer piss. At least girls, we made friends girls, along the Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> at least we didn't have to hang out with the women. <laughs> <laughs> they often like, he's like, I just don't know what happened. I don't know. 
always telling you not to eat your cinnamon rolls. I'm getting mad at you for looking at the cinnamon rolls. <laughs> so I think I think uh Lee Austin like during like it probably starts getting like snowy or too bad to like travel at some point, so they wander off to go find some food and it was a it was a good bonding moment. They were able to like at least Lee Austin walked away feeling better. A little bit better. Yeah. Alright. We'll go ahead and pass that over to Poppy as Poppy narrates the next uh, the next day of adventure towards what clearly at this point you can tell is a temple uh, on the side of a mountain cliff. Okay, so I think that compared to what happened in uh, the in Indolin's shack. Today's pretty chill, too. Like, <laughs> we can't top that. So, I think what happens is everyone's just sort of, like, trying to calm down. It's a little awkward, like <laughs> was stated before. And Poppy, Poppy had promised her mom before she left to, like, write about her days um, so that she can hear all about them. And then um, Poppy... <laughs> has written a really long thing just complaining like we can never go to the Feywild with these people this is awful do you you'll never believe what Lee Austin did and sin oh my god you'll never <laughs> you'll never believe it it was it was flirting it was kind of gross and uh, <laughs> it's just a really long thing <laughs> and I think that uh uh she does like show it to, like, Prudence to, like, proofread. <laughs> like, this is good, right? Okay. Uh, that, that by the way, could be written on... No, this is not an advertisement, but it could be written on Word Anvil as a social media post. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> I need to post all of my emotions right now on Word Anvil. You need me. I'm, I'm just saying. God. Just, just because I'm, 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 ma I'm making characters on it, and I can't. They're not, they're not in your guys' world. But hey, you guys could. I mean, it does give you another thing to interact with. But I know that that might be one too many things. But okay, so you, you spend, you spend most of the day writing, just uh, writing your heart out, uh, your feeling, your feels. Uh, and then you, uh, on the last day. Mara, you guys begin to kind of ascend the spiral up to uh, the top, uh, near the top of the mountain. And uh, but that, that in itself is a day's journey. So what happens along the mountain as you ascend it? Um, I think as they're walking up, uh, is Prudence in the cart or is she like walking alongside it? She's been jogging alongside of it for quite a while. Jogging. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Mara's just gonna talk to her and see, like, how she's, how she's doing. Um. Mara, I sense that you're looking at me. Is there something you need? I, I, I was just, uh, curious, you know, how, how you're doing, leading this group of, uh, Rascals can't be easy. It's been a rough couple days. We're on the way to the temple. Just, just check it in. See how you're doing. It's quiet for a minute as she's huffing beside you. No, it's fine. Everything is fine. I love all of you very much. Is it fine? Oh yes, perfectly fine. Why wouldn't it be fine? And she starts running faster. I've noticed, uh, since the bird lady's house that, uh, you and Lee Austin haven't been quite as close. What's going on there? <laughs> she gives you the most withering, piercing look. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't always have to hang out with Lee Austin. What color are Prudence's eyes? They are gray with no pupils. They have ah. they were replaced when she was uh, in a house fire. Terrifying. Uh, I've never noticed how beautiful your eyes are before. <laughs> Prince trips. <laughs> <laughs> False face raised in the snow. 
Fendi Shipping Alliance has just changed. It takes so little to. <laughs> it takes so little apparently. with me, y'all. Don't ever, <laughs> don't ever get behind Fendi. Uh, I lost my train of thought. I was staring into Prudence's eyes. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, Mara extends her hand. She's keeping up with Prudence, and she is not. She is not huffing at all. She's fine. Um, you know, those two extra legs really help out. <laughs> um, and she just puts her hand on her on Prudence's shoulder, and she goes, "You know, if you ever need someone to talk to, I'm here, and I have a nice womanly touch, so I could probably give you some good advice." Uh, oh. Yep. Okay. And then she trots off. <laughs> Rears right up and in. goes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> left standing in the snow with a very red face. <laughs> okay. Damn girl, you neigh with that mouth. <laughs> uh, all right. And it is that you find yourselves. As the snow has kind of reached a zenith, it is definitely coming down. You are quite grateful for the temple that sits in front of you. There is clearly... It is clearly in a state of disrepair. Uh, archway, An archway that passes by that is still standing by the grace of one pretty solid structure... Uh, most of it all is fr completely frosted over, and it seems that it is in a perpetual state of cold. It probably has never seen, uh, warmth in at least but a few weeks out of the year. The statue you see at the top of the staircase that leads up to it is half frosted over, half worn stone, and... The structure itself gives way to hallways that surround the entirety of the building, and it seems that the building itself, there is little room inside, but nonetheless, uh, you guys reach the top at the Temple of the Gods, and the cart gets parked as you prepare to uh, gather your respective gifts to enter the temple and offer them to your parents, the very gods themselves. And we will end it there. <laughs>